Tidy. I'm nearly ready. Oh, there hey. you are. I've got all the things. What on earth are you on about? Hey? <laughs> well, I've got all my stuff. You know, I'm going out on the journey, aren't we? We're going out in your new car. Come on, open up the boot. <laughs> Trev, look, you're not going anywhere. I'm going out for a journey on my own, OK? What? What, what about me? Can't I come? No, I, look, I haven't got a boot here. You can't put your stuff in the boot. I haven't got a boot. What, what, what you mean you've brought a car with one seat as well? Yes. Yes? yes. You brought a car with <laughs> yes. and no boot? No well, boot. Well, 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 but you put, put all the lifts I've given you. But you mean, tight-fisted, mean, mean man. Come on, move up. Come on, I'll squeeze in next to you. I'll go open the boot, will you? There's all nowhere these to sit, no. Where are you going to sit? Well, look, that's... Uh, Oh, this is ridiculous. What kind of car is this? Well, it's a car with no boot and one seat. Well, what, well, what has it got? Has it got a stereo? Uh, no, no stereo. What, central locking? Uh, no, no central locking. <laughs> no central locking? No, well, it hasn't got any doors. Well, what has it got then? Has it got electric windows? No, don't tell no. me. No windows. Sunroof? No. No, no, no roof. Has it got leather seats? No. No, no driving passenger airbags? No. No air conditioning? Well, sort of. Oh, it's... <laughs> Someone saw you coming, mate. I'll tell you, how much was this car? It was about 970... Oh, let's round it up to a million. What? Yes, a, a million? million? Yes. Oh, it better go for that much. What, what, what is it? 1.1? 1 1.2? 1 1 1.3? No, no, one Trevor, it's, not got, one it's got what? a 750 brake horsepower V10 engine. It can do 0 to 100 in 2.5 seconds, and it's got a top speed of 212 miles an hour. Wow! Mm -hmm. Hang on a minute. What? You're having me on, aren't you? What? This isn't your car at all. What do you mean? Well, it says whose car it is on the side. What? This is Ben Elton's car. Ben Elton? It's Ben Elton! Ben Elton's on like... oh, oh, you know what he's get like. He'll it. kill us. Get, get out, out of there. there. I'm sure they'll be back. They're running away now and Johnny will be hot-footing it after them, but they'll be back, I'm sure, for later. <coughs> Sherry, it's lovely to have you with us all morning Thank this morning. Thank you. And we've got First, I've got to show you, I've got to introduce you to someone, Baz. We've got a new driver. We've got a new driver now. He goes a bit fast, but I reckon we'll get around the country oh, a bit. For... Who's... Get... Who is it? Let's have a look quick. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. oh. All right. Sorry, all Johnny. Right. All right, Johnny. All right. Yeah, we want to go down the market next. All right? Yeah, no problem. Good guy. Oh, thanks, <laughs> thanks, big John. He makes us go much faster. Yeah, he goes very fast. His other car wasn't big enough for the three of us. Anyway, here we are with our giveaway for this week. Now, what we got, Baz? All this Snoopy air dryers and... Um... Yeah, well done to Emma. I thought she did brilliantly. Johnny, great to have you with us this morning. I'm sorry about that question earlier. No, that's quite You have right. to forgive me. I, but... I, I think about it. <laughs> Tell me how you actually got started in, in racing. What age were you when you first got interested? Uh, well, when I first got interested, I was about five or six, and I started in karting. That's really how I first got involved, which was a very good thing. It's quite a good way, isn't it? Because lots of, lots of the famous drivers actually have started off in karting. Yeah, I think the majority, there's only a couple that actually haven't started in karting. I think just in general, even if you don't do motor racing, it's a good thing to learn just for, before you drive a car. And to get started. Yeah. Fantastic. Right, we've got lots of calls and questions for you. I think we'll start off on the phones and say hello, Line 1, who's there? Hello, it's Vicky from Surrey. Good morning, Vicky. What's your question for Johnny? OK, um, when you had your question, Formula 3000, was it a hard decision getting back into a racing car? Um, it wasn't really a hard decision because uh, for some silly reason I just thought I'd get back into a racing car and I was always there and I remember when my feet were on a pillow up in the air um, and they didn't even move at that time. I was always, I think, about the first month and they moved about one millimetre and I thought, I can move, they're moving so I can actually do it. And it was just a thing inside that drove me towards getting back again. Because your, your crash was, I mean, you actually... When you crashed, you were going at something like 145 miles an hour, weren't you? I mean, it was a it's quick enough, really, yeah. it was a really bad. I mean, you were very brave about it, but you you really did make a remarkable recovery from yeah, that. Yeah, well, I was I was very lucky. The injuries I had with my ankles, I didn't have anything internally, so if the body could just go down and actually repair that that problem. I think mm. if you have a problem inside as well, and then you have the the bone breakages, it just takes a lot longer. Even more difficult. Yeah. Thanks very much for that call. Let's take a question from Ben. Um, how do you feel about not having a team to drive for next year? Um, it's a bit frustrating, um, being unemployed as I am at the moment. It's, uh, it's something that I'm working on at the moment and I should probably know in the next week or two exactly what, what I'm doing if I'm still standing in Formula 1 or moving across to IndyCar. Lots of other people, haven't they, moved, out, moved over to IndyCar? Nigel Mansell did that, didn't he? Yeah, he had a go at it. It's, yeah. you know, it's another thing, it's sort of, I think Formula One, to me, is still the best there is. And I think the way the IndyCar series is run, it's in a very enjoyable series. So it's something I've always looked at as a, as a young kid. But you might find out in the next week if you've got a drive, as they I say. I should do, hopefully. You're impressed with that, a yeah. drive. Good. Let's get back onto the phones. Hello, line two, who's there? Michaela. Hello, Michaela. Hi. What's your question? Um, 
If you were the president of the FIA and you had to make up some rules to make Formula One safer, more exciting and environmentally friendly, what would those rules be? Well, I, th I think at the moment the, the FIA are doing a, doing a pretty good job. There's a lot of development at the moment going into safety, especially around the driver's head as we had the, the recent accidents. And uh, they are doing a very good job with that. They're trying to get some airbags involved as well, which is a good thing. So they're, they're looking at that side of it. The racing side, probably as a driver, the only way we can make that more exciting is obviously to get the racing closer, but I think because of the technology that's all involved in Formula One, it just makes that a little bit more difficult to actually achieve. And I mm. think the only way we can really get Formula One close together is, is to get all the teams, all the engine manufacturers together and try and get something where the cars are as close as possible. But it's good, as you said, on the safety front, they're developing more and more things all the time to yeah. make yeah, it Yeah, I'd say that's a big, impro you know, big yeah. improvements are coming along for next year, especially. Fantastic, thanks for that call. Diana. Did you watch your driving test first time? I did. I was, I was, I have to say, I can smile with that one. Yes, I had a couple of, I think I had one lesson and I, I passed it on the first one time. One lesson? So, yes. Wow. Well, I used to sort of have a little cheaty practice on, uh, when I was karting, a lot of them were on airfields, so I used to drive around the airfield. So I had a little bit of a, and in before. But were you very nervous when you took a driving test? I was pretty nervous. It was the normal thing. When you drive, it was it's so annoying. I still get it now that when I drive, I always cross my arms because to me that's the best way. And in your driving test, car. you have to You've feed the wheel. Is what they say. Yes. Else. Mm. God, very very nervous. Me crazy. First time on one lesson. Wow. <laughs> okay. Let's go back onto the phones. Hello, line three. Um. Hello. 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 Who's that? It's Aaron Clemore from Hornchurch. Good morning, Aaron. What's your question? Well, I was wondering. Um, I'm a big fan of the Benetton team. Yeah. And um, how well do um, Johnny and Michael Schumacher get on? Because like Hill and Coulter get on very well for the Williams team. Right, good question. Yes, how do you both get on? No, we, we get on fine within uh, the way the team works. We, we, we do get on fine. We, we, we talk a lot. Uh, we don't see that much of each other. We don't see it, uh, each other at all outside racing because he lives in Monaco and obviously I'm still in England. So that makes it difficult. But when we're, when we're at the circuit, he's fine. He's a, he's a guy that he doesn't want anybody really to get to know him because I think if, if he gets someone he's getting to know how he works. He mm. finds that a bit of a threat, so he, he tries to distance himself a bit. He's a very determined man, isn't he? You can see very, him there. Very determined, yes. yeah. Well, that I think was... we all are really down. Yeah. It's just in our different ways, we're all, all different. Good question. Thanks for that. Sean. What's your favourite circuit around the world? Um, the best circuit, I think, I think every driver likes it, is Spa in Belgium. It's, uh, it's in the Ardennes. It's, it's got a fantastic street circuit, basically. But it's... Uh, very wide, it's in the trees, and it's just so pretty, and the atmosphere is so good. And there's a, and a special corner, a rouge, which is a flat out. But it's when you when you watch it on television, you cannot see how steep it is, and it's it's literally, I don't know, like that. It's so yeah. steep going up, and to watch a Formula One car go through it and the sort of the vibrations it gives, it's pretty impressive. It's very exciting. And what yeah. is the best weather conditions for racing? And your what will be your dream day to race? Do you kind of look yeah, at the weather? A very dry one. <laughs> but, no, but one with the sun shining and, I mean... Uh, yeah, I say something that's not too hot. The, the heat is a, is a normal thing. I think when you're concentrating so much, the heat doesn't affect you too much. Right. But obviously, if it's something about 20, 25 degrees, that's really comfortable. Because when I went in a, in, in a racing car once, it was freezing. And you've got all that thing, but it is still freezing, isn't it? It's freezing, but once you start working in driving around, you warm up you quite warm quick. Up. I don't think I was going fast enough, to be honest. <laughs> Let's go on to line five. Hello, line five. Hello, um, I'm Stephen from Grantham. Good morning, Hello, Stephen Steve. from Grantham. How are you today? All right, thanks. Good. What's your question for Johnny? Um, what's the most terrifying um, experience you've ever been in your motor racing career? Well, I think the worst experience I think a driver has is when you probably see a, a bad accident and you, you come round and you, you don't really know what's happened and then they stop the race and then obviously for the next... 10, 15 minutes when they're trying to sort, sort the accident out, you're always concerned that they haven't got any, any problems. And uh, I say it's mainly a concern and it's just a big, big worry. So that, I think that from that side, it's the worst part. Right. Thank you very much for that call. Let's take a question from Helen. Who do you most admire in Formula One racing? Um, well, I think the guy I most admired, I think, was Ayrton Senna, to be honest. He yeah. was, I think, the most complete driver we've had in Formula One and uh, he was a very nice guy with it and I think that that really helped. I remember you saying that actually on, on the first uh, time you came in you said that he yeah. uh, sadly he's 
Yeah, he's, uh, no he's gone, which is a shame. No. But he was, I think, still is. He was the, the most complete. The ultimate one. Right, let's take a very quick call on line four. Hello, line four. Hello, it's Leah from Sheffield. Good morning, Hi. Leah. What's your question? Do you have any lucky charms when you're racing? <laughs> um, <laughs> the only thing I had, I hate saying it, but I, the only thing I said was after I won Silverstone, I had my lucky pants, and that was about the <laughs> lucky, lucky charm I've got. So, uh, yes. Your lucky pants. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't think we need you. to say any more about Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you very for that much question. for that question, yes. Maria. And uh, sadly, Johnny, we've run out of time before, Never before we can see you. We can't see your lucky pants now, I'm afraid. No, but thank you very not. much <laughs> for coming in this morning and no being problem. such a great guest and, and came for a laugh, as they say. Thank you. Oh, dear. I want to know, can we join your fan club? You certainly can. Yeah, yeah Emma and I want to join because Johnny's got a fan club. We're big fans, aren't yes, we? Yes, he's got a fan club and you get, you get very good cre yeah. credit cards with the fan Absolutely, very well, designer. Very credit card? I'll give them well, away. It's not your money. <laughs> <laughs> he's worried we'll spend his money. It's not your money we'll spend. Don't you worry about that. No, no. Check